Hello and welcome to Keep Right On. I'm Brian Dick and I'm joined today by a face every Birmingham City fan will recognise. One who belongs to the man who scored all of the goals in one of the greatest seasons in the club's history. Welcome Steve Claridge, a legendary Blues centre forward who won the League and Cup double. Became the first player since Trevor Francis to score 20 league goals in a season, a feat that stood for 24 years, and who was a key part of one of the most colourful periods in the club folklore. Steve went on to score the goals that won promotion and the League Cup with Leicester City, and he also enjoyed a promotion with Millwall, and continued playing a level of football, certainly beyond me, probably beyond many of us, into his 50s, I think, Steve. As well as being a yes. <laughs> foolishly, I hasten to add, but there we go. Yeah. As well as being a player, he's been a coach, a manager, and a pundit. All of which begs the question, Steve: How are you? And are you wearing any of those hats at the moment? No, I'm. I'm not actually. Um, I've uh, just through, really through personal circumstance. Um, my father died a year or so ago, um, and I we we bought a little bit of land a while ago, and. Um, I live, so we're a little bit out of the way. I live next door to my mum. Um, and uh, basically, uh, I sort of look after her in a way. So that's that's where I am. I don't, don't get me wrong, I'm not I'm busy. Um, you know, I haven't got enough time in the day. But um, with regard to things that are going to take me a, uh, further afield or, you know, take me away from what, what, what you know, I'm, I'm basically I'm concentrating on now. Um, yeah. I'm, I'm just not prepared to do so. Uh, at this stage, no, um, but probably yes in the future. But when that will be, hopefully will be a little while, a little yeah. while yet, so to speak. Yeah, indeed. Yeah, I've, uh, I, ca- I can uh, empathise with you massively. Uh, I lost my own stepfather just a month or so ago. So, yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, yeah. Thank, thank you for that, Steve. Uh, it seems slightly facile now to ask you about football and Birmingham City of 30 years ago. but no, um... no. It's, always, <laughs> it's, I, I, it's, it's always fantastic to go back. It really is. And, you know, it, it's, it's still very vivid and it evokes fantastic memories. So, yeah, great. Well, let, let's take a walk back down that long, long road. Uh, January 1994, um, the last time Blues were in the third tier, which obviously is where they found them, find themselves now. Yeah. Uh, Steve, uh, you signed for Blues. Uh, it was uh, during the, the Mad Cat Barry Fry era when yeah. mo- most footballers signed for Blues, to be fair. I was going to uh, say, yes. Yeah, I, was, <laughs> I was one of many, wasn't I? <laughs> you, you certainly weren't alone uh, in your rival's departure. When you, when you put together, I had 22 clubs and Baz bought about 100 players. There was a fair <laughs> chance that we, our paths would cross, wouldn't we? Weren't there? So, yeah. Indeed. If it, if it was a Venn diagram, yeah, there'd be lots of intersections yeah, there. Um, what do you remember of your of the circumstances around your signing, Steve? Obviously, you were at Cambridge uh, back in January 94. And then Barry, I think, had only been in through the door at St Andrews about a month. Uh, yeah, I mean, I come across Baz, obviously, with regard to Barnet. And, you know, and, and um, he, he obviously kept his finger on... The lower leagues and um, and 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 new good players actually. To be fair, I mean the one thing that Baz did know was um, you know players that that he remembered um, and that he'd come across. Um, it was my second period at Cambridge. Uh, the first period being one of the most successful, obviously the most successful in the club's history. Second one, obviously not quite uh, lived up to those sort of uh, standards. So um, I think the deal was done literally. Uh, the club was was in trouble. Uh, I think Cambridge were were, were going to get relegated that year, and I think Baz sort of did it in the boardroom. Just went and went up to one of the directors and offered him some money, and um, I think it was accepted then. And then obviously I got the call, and uh, off I went. And in those days, it's pretty much a done deal, isn't it? You, 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 yeah, I think so. Yeah. I mean, as soon as someone you know, in the, I mean, Cambridge weren't um, obviously. Uh, Flush with money at that stage, anyway. The club was on on its on you know on its way down again um, uh, from the dizzy heights that we've managed to reach first time round, mm. and uh, you know fin- finances were tight. So I think they were only too pleased. I think it's four four fifty or something, and they're only too pleased to take it. Yeah, indeed. Uh, you came into a blue side with its own issues. To be fair, didn't you? Uh, yeah. Struggling, struggling towards the bottom of what is now the championship, and yeah. event- eventually one that would slip out of the league uh, at the end of that. You know, four or five months af- after you joined, but you did score seven 
in the 17 games that season. Uh, yeah. And the, t- the teams put together a run of six wins from nine games, but still went down. Uh, yeah. re- th- those circumstances of that relegation, was it away to Tranmere on the last day and, and a relegated yeah. team? West Brom went re- to Portsmouth, who hadn't been beaten at home all season and managed to win 2-0. And we obviously went to Tranmere 1-2-1 and um, went down on goal difference, I think. I yeah. think we only ever got out of the bottom three once, and that was when we went to West Brom and beat them 4-2. Yeah. Um, but unfortunately, I think they had a game in hand, and in the end, it was uh, just just a bridge too far, which was a shame um, because uh, I can remember when when I first went to the club. I think it was the Kumar brothers had been there, were there before, um, and obviously similar to what's happened now, it's been a takeover. Um, the club had um, had really struggled in in every aspect um, prior to you know the Sullivans and the Golds and uh, coming in. And I think the average gate was something like six or 7,000, believe it or not, prior to us coming in. And suddenly, you know, that sort of doubled and trebled. And then there was an, uh, an excitement and an atmosphere around the ground. And then you know, things started to happen and you could feel it. And the players that Baz brought in, I mean, there was some, there was some it, it wasn't a great side. And there was some, it, it felt stale and it felt old and then it needed something fresh and it needed something new. Um, whether it was ready for Barry Fry, I'm not, not quite sure um, at that stage, but uh, it was fun no matter what. And um, we, in the end, we were very, very unlucky not to, not to stay up. Um, I think our, our catch song was, if you remember back in the day, things can only get better. That was what we used to... Um, yeah. They did, thankfully. So that was good. Yeah, indeed. Um, so you started, spent the summer of 1994 um, preparing for what was now a League One campaign, we'd, we'd call it. Yeah. Um, and it, it just went sensationally well. Um, they won the league with 89 points, uh, never really in doubt. Also won the... Uh, the oh, was it the Leyland Daff that one, or was it the auto, auto windscreens? Wind, it, it was the auto, yeah, yeah. It was auto windscreens. It was, wasn't it? That's right. Um, uh, and there were loads of clean sheets. Steve, you scored a bucket loads of goals, as I said earlier, more, more than twenty. Uh, the team returned to uh, or won promotion. What was it about that team, Steve, that 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 was so dominant in that season? Okay, so firstly, I think I need to uh, clarify something here that. Um, that year, there was only one team got promoted. Yeah. They were changing the numbers in the leagues um, and they wanted more teams in the championship. Um, so there was there was no playoff. There was no second. Um, you, you finished first or it was nothing. Yeah. So, you know, with all due respect, that is pressure. That's pre- pressure from minute one. We didn't, if I remember rightly, we, we started the season and it was a little bit hit and miss. And I do remember... Um, they sort of shut Baz down a little bit with regard to transfers. And there was like a period of about 25 games where we didn't do any any major transfer dealings. And the club really, the, the side settled down after that. And, um, you know, I think it was 25 games and we really did, you know, put, put a really strong run together. Got in a great position come the end of the season. One or two iffy results, but, you know, we, we managed to see it through mainly because... And this was the, you know, this is what you've asked me, because of the strength, character, and resolve of those players. Now, you know, some players, when you're in that position, respond to pressure. Others don't. You know, it was real pressure. You know, the expectation was that we got promoted. It, it, you know, that's not, that's not realistic, um, because nobody's got that right to to just go through that division and get promoted. We've seen, you know, sides equally as big as Birmingham really, really struggle and take years to get out of it. So it, I, I do remember, you know, it being a, a, a fantastic year. What I remember most is the players were had bags of character. If you wanted to play, we play. If you want to mix it, we we're more than capable of mixing it. You know, we had some real strong boys, Dave Barnett, Dave She, Pete Shearer, you know, real proper men um, who, who, who could deal with any situation. And then we had real pockets of quality as well. Um, so I think it was it was the right players at the right club. Those players hadn't hadn't been at a club like Birmingham before. 
and they need their, their character was built for a club like Birmingham. So it, it, it really did suit both parties. And I say it was real pressure um, yeah. right up to the very end. Um, you know, we you know, people, you know, expectation was that we get out of it. And obviously finishing the way we did uh, prior to that season in the championship also added to the fact that people thought, you know, that this, club, this, this team and this club should be at this level. Um, you know, we were selling out most weeks. It was fantastic atmospheres, but you're everyone's cup final, aren't you? We all know yeah. that. So yeah. you know, teams would come and um, it, it was, you know, we'd always make it very, very difficult. But as I say, we had that little bit of, little bit about us to just to see it through. Yeah. What would be the the one sort of highlight of that season? There was a 7-1 win over Blackpool. There's all, no, there's Huddersfield also, away. Yeah, I was going to say, it was Wembley Goal. and then there, yeah. Yeah, Huddersfield away when when I think you know when you, you I still remember that bank of fans, you know, and scoring and just running behind with my knees up, sort of <laughs> great um, celebration. Just, yeah, <laughs> just just sort of like the relief of you know thinking you know if we can win this one then we're we're there sort of thing and it, it was a brilliant day. It was a it was a really fantastic day it, because of the it was the release of nine months of pressure. Absolutely, it wasn't. I was going to say, was it a joyous occasion? It was, but it, there's also huge relief tinged in, in amongst those feelings because, you know, you, you've achieved what you set out to achieve. It's not, it was never an easy season. It was never an easy league, um, you know, and, and Baz is not an easy manager to play for. So, you know, pressure was the buzzword. Yeah. What do you remember of that day? Is there, can you can you open yeah, the remember, change room door that. for us a little bit? Yeah, I mean it was it was obviously a new ground. Um, there was that bank behind the goal, so they'd given us that whole bank, um, and it's just one of those days that you 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 know is special, and you, you know you want to make the most of, and um, and and then they're, they're the days that you know that you remember when you finish. Yeah, indeed. I bet the celebrations were quite something, weren't they? Yeah, they were. I would say. <laughs> after, after you know, once you that big, you know, get that out of the system, and then obviously understand what you've what you've done and and what what you've achieved. Um, yeah, brilliant. Uh, Steve, today's there's so many parallels with with today's Birmingham City and the ownership situation and the relegation and and being favourites to come back up, up this season. What I understand to be one of the big differences is that. Uh, the current squad have very much every, you know, pretty much everything laid on a plate. You know, the, the training they've got two training yeah. grounds and they're yeah. absolutely beautiful. Yeah, your your training conditions were not beautiful, were Horrendous. they? You know, the, the, Horrendous. The, the, just just talk us through sort of what what. Well, we started please. off at school, right? We trained on the school. You know, there's kids yeah. walking around. You know, the outskirts of the pitch. There was dog muck, glass. It was, you know, it was, but then, you know, most of us were used to that. So it didn't matter. That was sort of, <laughs> that was really, that was the sort of background that we come from. So um, no big time Charlie's. <laughs> no, 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 no. Just, just, you know, uh, 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 I can you say just, just wanted better, you know, needed better, wanted better, deserved better, I suppose. And, and in the end, they did manage to sort somewhere out for us. Yeah, but you'd literally start a training session by go, going around the pitch and making sure it, it was okay and safe not, to play. No, I mean, that was the school. That was obviously the school. Right. You know, oh, right, okay. school there, you know, there, yeah. there's going to be litter. There's going to be, that's any school. Um, in the end, we didn't. We we, play, we trained at the Land Rover site on the A45. Right, got you, yeah. Which is yeah. now a rugby club. Yeah, yeah, I know it. Um, one thing that uh, strikes me about that season is how many games you played uh, and you would have gone up against Liam Dace in training every, every day of the week, pretty much. How, how was that? You, you, well, da Dacey was... I, I get on really well with now now with Dacey, but um, obviously we, we had sort of a fractious relationship because uh, obviously we were at Cambridge together yeah. and he, he, he never quite got me sort of thing. And um, I, I was <laughs> sort of... I used to frustrate him. Um, I'll give you an indication of what didn't help was we had... Um, we had uh, at Cambridge, they did this big sponsorship thing. So obviously we weren't on a lot of money, but they had this big sponsor who would come in and sponsor a man of the match, um, and and like proper, you know, the 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 latest 
hi-fi system, you know, back in the day, six, seven hundred quid's worth, uh, a set of golf clubs, fantastic set of golf clubs, one of these really nice racing bikes. Anyway, the first six games, um, I managed to win man of the match on each occasion. So <laughs> the manager and myself, obviously, John Beck, didn't exactly get on very well. So on the seventh game, he went, right, we're not doing this man in the match stuff anymore. Whatever happens, whoever wins it, um, it will go into a pot and then we'll put it in a pot and then we'll either sell it or people can buy it or whatever. But I'm not doing this anymore because he's not having any more man in the match. So, of course, we, we play the seventh game and the match is awarded. And who's awarded man of the match, do you think? Good old Liam. <laughs> but the manager said no one can have the prize. <laughs> so obviously I'm sat there with six prizes. He wins the, the first one. Oh, he went absolutely bonkers. He won- <laughs> I'm not he's, he's got six, I'm not giving it back. It's just just fantastic it was anyway. So <laughs> but no, we got on great days. No, he's a good guy and all that. But it was just uh, as I say, it was uh, it was good fun. And he was actually when I went to Birmingham, believe it or not. I walked through the door and lo and behold, who sat in reception but Daisy. Right way. Yeah. So, and did you ro- you rolled your eyes at each other or had I a giggle? Rolled our eyes at each other. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> but in the end, he was great. He's, you yeah. know, he's, a, he's a proper, proper lad. Good, good, good character. And in the end, um, it was great. So you really enjoyed it. Uh, you had 27 strike partners, I think I read somewhere, Steve, at, at Blues. Crazy. Crazy. Um, Absolute madness. Yeah. I, 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 I mean, I, I think, if I remember rightly, I, I think I had four or five in one game. Right. <laughs> yeah, I think we got beat 5 2 at Watford. I, I, whether I'm remembering this correctly, but I, I, we had a player who got on the coach, and the, 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 uh, one of our coaches stopped him from getting on the coach. Um, right. Uh, I'm trying to think where this was now. And um, it was an away game. And this lad got on the coach and um, the coach stopped him. I think it was either Alzi or Ed. So you can't get on the coach here. This is for players. And he said, oh, I am a player. <laughs> and they didn't bat inside him and <laughs> the coaches didn't know. So <laughs> it gives you some idea of uh, how, how what a rotating door it was. Yeah. <laughs> Hello, yeah. Steve. This is this is John. You'll be playing up front with him today, sort of thing. Yeah. Yeah. It, um, was, it was very much a case of, you know, and and to be fair, if Baz, you know, if you didn't do it, Baz would see you off. If you weren't a strong character, yeah. you know, he certainly sorted the wheat from the chaff. Do you know what I mean? If if you didn't have anything about you, you were gone. You had no chance. Who was? If there's one player that was that was that you enjoyed playing with or had a chemistry with who, uh, uh, in that Blues team? Uh, who would it have been? Um, oh, what's his name? The bald headed lad. <laughs> Sa- Sa- Sav? Right. I can't think of... Uh, do you know what? This is, this is how ridiculous it is. I can't... I, can't, we had, I had so many, but it was the, the, the bald headed lad. Savage, would it have been? Somebody savage, or it was Sav, Sav something. Right, I can't remember now. It's, it's crazy, but there were so many. Um, yeah, probably, probably him. Right, okie doke. Um, so yeah, you as you as you said, you you went up back at the end of that season, back into the what was then the championship. Yeah, uh, and it and it it was going okay. It was it was a battle in the championship that season. Can you? But it's but, going well. We yeah, were it, up to Christmas. It's going yeah. really well. Yeah. Uh, but, you ended up leaving in March, Steve, in March of that, that following season. What, what were the circumstances around that? The circumstances were that I got ill. Um, and uh, I think, in all honesty, uh, I don't want to speak out of turn here, but up until I got ill, the club, we were flying. You know, around Christmas yeah. time, I think we were right up there. You know, we could have even been top, um, but we were certainly right in amongst it. And um, I got my... I, I've been taking a a beta blocker for my heart and the odd own. And unbeknown to me, that has the side effect of um, ruining your thyroid gland. And I'm, I don't want to come across as some sort of um, medicational expert here, but what that does is that then 
means that you're devoid of all energy. The, the thyroid gland produces all the energy in your body. Right. Um, and I went about 13 games. I, I couldn't get out of bed. I, I literally couldn't move. I was cold all the time. My feet had pins and needles constantly. Um, I, you know, I, I was the fittest lad at the club, and yet I could not. I could barely run around the pitch. Um, so it was a real, 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 real concern. And obviously, you know, Baz and Karen are not the most sympathetic of characters. So I was sort of um, trying to find a way through this. Um, and obviously, you know, they're saying what's the matter and what, you know, and I, I've always been a, a one in two, one in two and a half. Yeah. And suddenly I've gone like 12 games without a goal. And I knew something was drastically wrong. Um, but strangely enough, in that period, I was sold to Leicester. Indeed. So, um, yeah. You know, and, and I went there and I think I went four or five games there um, without scoring. I, I actually can remember running down the tunnel against Millwall. Uh, I got to the centre circle and I nearly killed over because I just did, didn't have any energy at all. I started right. that game and my feet were so full of pins and needles I couldn't feel the ball. Um, and, and then I got, I went to hospital obviously explained everything and, and within two days, strangely enough, two or three days, I was back to where I should have been. I just wish that I'd done it, you know, when I was at Birmingham, but I just didn't know what was going on with me. Right. Gosh. Obviously the, the doctors know amiodarone, so there is an association between amiodarone and your thyroid gland. So it was literally yeah. picked up immediately when, when I gave them the symptoms. And literally as soon as I started taking the thyroxine, it's back to back to what you know, feeling right. normal again. And, and back to scoring goals and putting Leicester in the in the Premiership yeah, and yeah, winning, yeah, winning yeah. League Cups, yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, I, I spoke to Martin, and Martin was um, obviously just after Martin was going to leave me out of the game when we went to Crystal Palace on the Tuesday night. And I begged him to play, um, and the, the club had been on a terrible run, and I, I managed to bend one in the bottom corner, scored the goal, and we won eight of our next ten. Yeah. Fantastic. Just, just, you know, march, thits thin margins like that. Fine margin. Andy, Andy Savile was the name you were looking for. Andy Savile, there you go. There we Andy go. Savile. I've got the Sav bit. Yeah. Andy yeah. Savile, yeah. Good lad as well. Really nice lad. Yeah, yeah indeed. Uh, so Steve Blues find themselves back in League One at the moment. Final question. Um, it's 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 got to be a one-season stay, hasn't it, for a club that size? Yeah, I mean, you... you, 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 you in theory. You can't, yeah. yeah, in theory. You can't. You don't want to say that because there are going to be there are always going to be other very very decent clubs, and I'm telling you now, um, I know no one's going to be spending the money that Birmingham are, but I, I promise you now, Wrexham will be spending a lot of money, a lot of money in that at that level, and there will be other clubs. There's always two or three lunatics in every division who pump way above you know where they should be, um, and it just whether or not you can cope with that or not. Um, I mean, fourteen million. I think Blues have spent on a on a four. That I mean, that's that's unheard of at that level. That's just unbelievable. So, should they get out of it? Um, probably a little bit like Leicester last year. They'll probably have the biggest squad, the best squad. Yeah. Um, does that always mean that if you've got the right manager and, and so far it looks like he's doing a good job, then hopefully the answer will be yes. But it certainly won't be any cakewalk, I know that. It doesn't matter where you are. Always harder to get out of a division than it is to stay in one. Yeah, yeah, indeed. Because the, there's there's just no margin for error, is there? And, and no, particularly, absolutely you know, not. No. Cer I certainly mean, not. As you say, expectations. Some players, and, and they, will, they will find out as the season progresses what players respond to that sort of pressure and what players don't. You know, yeah. and, and staying up the top of a division for a whole season is very, very tiring. Mentally, especially. Yeah. Steve, I really appreciate your time. Thank you for uh, taking us on that little trip down memory lane. Uh, no, hope... pleasure. As I say, I'm, I'm fingers crossed that, um, you know, they can they can do what they need to do. And I mean, the club really looks like it's going to go from strength to strength, doesn't it? So keep it going does. on. Yeah. Keep exactly. Right on. Well, Steve, you've, re you've, re you've read my script. We always end with a keep right on and you've done it. So thank you very much for pleasure, your time. Mate.